Pleasure to welcome you. It's, I'm really honoured that I can speak about Elamir Hankish in front of uh, this uh, highly privileged uh, audience and conference. I would like to uh, speak in three blocks, and maybe in the middle one might be the most original and most interesting to you, and I would like to um, find a relation to your Cepeli's presentation, who also touched upon this issue yesterday. I would also like to say a few words about our publishing house uh, at the Savara University Press, um, which might be important, and what books have been issued related to Hunkish. And I would also like to show you an example, demonstrate how, with my students at the university, uh, we talk about uh, post in a post-structuralist manner, and how we analyze poems uh, at the literature classes. And with this particular example, is going to focus on an, a poem by Janusz Orany. And Orany was one of uh, Hankish's favorite poets. And we are celebrating the 200th anniversary um, of Orany's birth. And Alamir Hankish very often quoted poems from him being uh, <laughs> With, you know, one of his favorite poets. Uh, his activity, Hankish's activity as a literary scientist uh, was significant because he had spent some time at the Hungarian uh, Academy of Sciences and worked for the Institute of Literature. And this is the book which really didn't meet uh, uh, satisfaction for, for the uh, power, for the uh, government and the, the communist regime thought it was uh, uh, dangerous and these are the books that we are actually working from uh, at the university and also my secondary school pupils um, deal with this subject because um, this book and the all the perspectives that it uh, offers basically determines 20th century and 21st century literary theory. Now, if you want to focus on literary theory of the century, this is a basic cornerstone. This is what you have to consult to understand what we are talking about. These two volumes uh, were published with the support of the Academy at that time, and it was uh, on the unreachable nature of certainty. This is what the uh, book is uh, talking about. And uncertainty used to be a buzzword and a keyword in Hankish's uh, uh, of, um, and as we know, later he left behind uh, literature, he decided to focus on sociology, and he went on to other disciplines. But I'm sure that this particular book would be worth, I mean, would deserve an award, a literary award. And it was published later when he was already a sociologist, and it uh, has offers a complex model uh, I would like to talk a little bit about. First, I would like to say that the title of this book very clearly uh, uh, express what was supposed, to, what was missing uh, from the literature before Hankish came on the scene, and it's the knowledge of um, the struggle of people, it's the preparation for such struggle, and he could uh, produce texts that had such wonderful microstructures on the like structures, at the end of which I could make all kinds of parallels with Hungarian writers and poets. So at the end of which, he says, well, if you want to know what I'm talking about, go back to the beginning and start reading all over again. Um, there are quite a few literary critics who follow the same principle and say I, say, I can say anything about this work, but I cannot possibly say anything about it, only a fragment. And Hankish has a holistic data, a holistic approach brought into uh, literary theory, 
and he sort of retains this approach, this perspective, and from the early 1980s, uh, actually from 1984 onwards, when Giza Otlik uh, becomes part of uh, the literary material for uh, students, and at least peripherically, um, Elemir Hankish also becomes uh, part of this uh, material. Uh, he focuses on layers, and he believes that if you put layers on top of one another, you will get a complex model, which will show you that as the world is a, a complex being, a literary work is also a complex unity, a complex entity, and it has all sorts of layers, metaphorical layers, layers of meaning, and this is what the scientists, the literary scientists, would like to describe to find the meanings and all kinds of functions of the different layers. And then, well, he concludes that if you want to learn about the whole of the poem, the whole of the little work, you need to work, uh, you need to read it uh, over and over again. Um, you can see this poem written in red letters on the screen, and uh, Hankish wanted to show how the whole world can be summed up in 12 words. It basically speaks about uh, vines, grape vines that are bleeding from uh, red leaves. Now, what does he say when analyzing this 12 word poem? The whole word is included in this poem. He says that there is one layer of meaning that he could trace the colors and how, how are, what are the colors related to? Well, they're basically related to diseases. And he says it's a complex system of interlinked elements. Now, the text is a bit complicated. I don't want to read it, but it basically claims it's impossible, of course, uh, to to analyze it at the same level as the poem gives you a kind of impression, but he produces a kind of oscillation between the real and the unreal and how the references are transferred uh, via a linguistic medium uh, and get, we get answers to our questions. So these flaming words which Kostolani uh, uh, uses in his work, it's like, allow me to show you something that he inspired as well. It's a kind of uh, literary analysis, a an analysis of a poem. And so it's a kind of playful, uh, playing around with the words. <laughs> Uh, actually, he, this poem that we are playing with now, Aran wrote it on his uh, 64th birthday. We are going to uh, uh, count the letters. Uh, the, the, the poem is made up of 65 letters, and now we are going to vote with the audience whether it's on purpose or not. So when Oren writes this poem, he is uh, 64 years old, and we don't know whether it's on purpose or by accident. So this uh, poem is based on numbers, and if you look at the mathematics, uh, mathematical aspect, uh, you can actually find this 64, this, this, this number featuring all the time, and it's quite obvious that it's not by chance that you can see the 64 featuring in the... Thank you.
So this is an old former student of uh, the speaker, and uh, he's act she's actually making a, a, a mathematical analysis <laughs> of, of uh, uh, using using the number 64. So if we deduce and try to make all kinds of uh, uh, equations with the numbers, well, we realize that it couldn't have been by chance that because at the core of everything there is the number six, 64. So the final conclusion is that Arany could uh, actually prove that uh, he had a very good talent in logics and mathematics and then it's quite obvious that the number 64 lay at the core of the, uh, the poem and the whole thing is uh, based on uh, numerology. Yeah? So let's vote. Who says that Arany uh, wrote on purpose this is, and it's and the 64 letters uh, are not by chance so the first question who says that it was on purpose Twenty three people say who says it's by accident <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> And 14, 15 people say that it, it, it's, it's, uh, it was not on purpose. But uh, I promise that by the time we have the next uh, conference on Honkish, I'm going to provide you with a more definite answer. And now, if we, if we can go back to the poem, let's say recite the poem together. And I think this is the last quotation that we should read. Anybody who is born to be Hungarian, whether you like it or not, you have to take a go with our passion, and you will have pleasure of reading Janusz Arany in original Hungarian. Thank you.